So let's uh, start the introduction. Maybe some people will come in on the wave, it's fine. Um, so I'm uh, Matthijs de Rijk. Um, some of you guys might remember me from some lightning talks from last year and from some time ago when I made a show that I made a hat with Blender, designed a hat that I was actually wearing. Uh, today I have a different one. Um, and last year I showed uh, uh, some of my work in uh, what I'm actually going to talk about now. Um, I called my thing uh, from the past to the present, but on hindsight it was not the most descriptive name for the course. So, uh, but you guys are here, so it's awesome. Um, so what do I do? Um, I do what I, uh, I, I invented my own job, I, uh, I like to say. I call it uh, artistic historical reconstruction, or myself an uh, historical reconstruction artist. Um, and what I mean by that is that I don't just uh, recreate the past. Um, I like to make it, uh, uh, give some aesthetic to it, like some, some, some more value, some, some feeling into the whole thing. Um, and that means that I work with like VR experiences or uh, expositions uh, to make those things. I'm going to rush a bit to the short intro because otherwise there's not much time for the workshop left. Um, so what does it mean? It means that we are uh, working with Hollywood and we're making uh, the most historical accurate movies of all time. For example, take Braveheart. It's one of the most, like if you, if you see it, most historic. No, it's not. It's one of the worst. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's actually it's a great movie. It's just not a historical movie. Um, and the more you get into the things, the more you realize like all the nitty nitty things. I cannot enjoy actually. I cannot enjoy movies anymore. It's 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 a, it's a curse. But um, what do I do? I take uh, paintings, uh, uh, drawings like these. Uh, this is uh, a drawing from the 16, 1650, 17, uh, from a castle in the Netherlands that currently is in ruins. Um, and I take pictures like these and there are more drawings and I create uh, this. So I try to rebuild like the old, like how the castle might have looked at some point in time um, going by the images. Uh, no way of knowing if it actually looked like this because there's a lot of speculation because, uh, but that's like the charm of it, I think. Like the research combined with like, uh, using some, some of your mind, like some logic. Um, or this, this is a piece from the Rex Museum. Um, I haven't actually seen this in person, so I all created this from this single image. Um, and let's see if it wants to load. Mr. Sketchfab. And there we go. So I recreated the whole thing animated that, and um, you can see that I don't actually only look at how it looks, but I also want to make sure that I know how it works, um, because that gives a sense of uh, authenticity to it, and there's actually pretty amazing things made in the past. Um, you all might know the, 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 the pirate pistol with the or flintlock uh, that slaps a bit of stone forward and makes a spark, and this one works different. This one has a wheel that, that uh, creates friction, and uh, uh, makes a spark that way. Well, let's see if we go to the next page. Yeah, there we go. Uh, or I create castles from, uh, this is a castle in Luxembourg, uh, currently half in ruins. Uh, this is a work in progress, it's still in the blocking phase, uh, but it gives you some uh, idea of that. Oh, I skipped past one. A project I'm currently working on, a part of Leiden, uh, where Rembrandt, the famous painter, uh, grew up. Uh, he lived there until 25, and we're actually recreating his living place. So he lived about in, in one of these houses. Um, we're currently like, rebuilding his house and making a VR experience out of it. Uh, and I'm working with a few guys that know a lot about it. I found some reference painting, an actual painting from back in the day. And I put it in my scene, I found the right perspective and it actually matches pretty well. So the painter did a good job, but I like to think I did a good, good job too. But, um, and this is one of the, going to be one of the windows. And actually, I did something wrong. I made this window of 1650, according to my uh, uh, co-workers, instead of 1630. Like they know a lot. They know which n which nails they use in which day. It's 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 crazy. Uh, the, the windows should actually have been like twice as small and twice as many. Um, and like the floor of uh, a house of the time. So uh, what are we going to do in our workshop? Um, 
we are going to create a shield. I mean, you all might have heard of the mighty Spartans of the, the Greek history. Um, we are going to create, oh, oh, oh. Uh, this is a spoiler. Okay, we, go, we are going to create a shield. So um, hmm, let's start with a UV swear. My keyboard wants to uh, activate, yeah, there we go. And uh, well, I, I'm just making it out of my mind. I've, I've seen a lot of uh, shields, so I, I think I'll, uh, I'll know what I'm doing. So uh, let's uh, delete this part, scale it down because it's like this. And, uh, oh. oh, you guys can see something. Um, and it has, a, it has this rim around it, I believe. So uh, we, we, we just kill this out, uh, give it some thickness like this. And uh, the Spartans had this triangle on their shield, so let's make that. Uh, just grabbing this, uh, these edges here. Let's see. Grabbing these edges. Uh, it's hard to see. Oh. Like this. And then uh, I'm just, I'm doing it quickly, so it's not going to be perfect. But uh, and, uh, it needs to bend with the shield, so we're making some loop cuts over here. All right. Uh, and then we use the powerful uh, magnet tool. We set it to a face snap. Um, and then we look from the top, move it up a bit. And uh, if we move it while holding control, it will actually snap to the shield. Whoop. Stupid keyboard. Come on. <laughs> I destroyed the whole thing. Okay. Uh, and then we give this some thickness, like this. Move it um, forward, a bit up. So, and now uh, material, already made one. So, uh, bam, we're done. It's a Greek shield. Actually, no, no, no. It's not a Greek shield. This is some Hollywood invention, some weird piece of copper that they made in a circle and put some things on it. No, it's not a shield. But how do we know? Because like it's over 2,000 years ago, 2,400 years ago, I believe. So how do we still know how these shields look? Well, luckily, the Greeks were also very great artists. So they, um, they made some paintings on vases. Um, so we actually have a pretty good idea of what the soldiers looked from the, uh, back in the day. So this is face painting, it's not very high resolution. Um, but as you can see, like um, the shields are round, so they go that right. Uh, but they have like pretty paintings on it. It's not just a simple metal bar. Um, and also on the backside, there's like these, these, uh, this arm strap that's decorated with some, some shapes and there's like a little rope in a circle. Uh, and one shield even has like a little cloth on side. They use that for, uh, for arrow fire, like so your legs are protected from arrows coming down. Um, yeah, so it's actually quite different. I mean, of course, someone I would say, it's just a shield, don't worry about it. Okay, fair point, but that's not my thing. Um, but there's actually one more thing. There's, I'm, I, I think, twi two, but at least one surviving shield from back in the day. Copper and uh, bronze actually preserves pretty well because it doesn't rust as, as fast as uh, iron does. Um, uh, so we've, uh, we have had one, and it actually has even some organic material in it. So this is the shield. It's uh, called the Vatican Shield because it's in the Vatican Museum. Um, and if we look in the UV editor, I have some more pictures here. Um, so as you can see, it's 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 not in the best state. <laughs> like there's some holes. In, I don't. Is this actually the, this is this one? Okay, so there are two shields. Um, so yeah, there are some holes in it, but you can you can get the size and you can get like the the, the shape of it. Um, as you can see, like it's pretty like bulby. But it, like it goes straight here, and then there's the, the the rim on the side, and it's actually quite thick. 
Uh, and the reason why that is, is because there's wood inside. So it's not just bronze, like in the, the 300 movie. Um, there's actually wood inside. So they, 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 they made the wood, and they made it actually quite thin. Like, I mean, this is like one to two centimeters. Um, and then they hammered uh, uh, the bronze into shape and, and covered it over. And uh, even scientists, when studying this thing, they said like they couldn't really figure out how they made like the the bronze curve over the side without getting all the furls. Because if, if, if you take some fabric and you fold it, like it's it's round and you fold it, you get like these furls on the side, like a tablecloth hanging over the table. Um, so all these details, like you want to catch, you want to, to catch capture them. In, in the real model to get something like believable, also interesting. And this also shows that um, I'm going to try to talk and work at the same time. Um, this shows that uh, it's not only like fun to uh, recreate the old thing, but there are also very interesting ideas that get lost if you only go from like a single view or a single uh, memory. So let's this time start out with a circle so we can actually have some more idea of our shape. Um, let's get our references on the side. Do, 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 do. UV editor. Uh, let's look at the side view. I think it's this one. No, it's the one before. Yep. So you can get some idea of the shape. I like to freehand a bit. I mean, you can also fill in the numbers and XX measurements, uh, which is like if you want to do a true uh, museum piece reconstruction, uh, which is also an awesome thing, but I, I want to catch like the, the, the feel of it, like the, the look of it. So it's, it's fine if it's like a millimeter off or something. So it actually goes quite straight up here. And then, whoop. There's a pretty sharp edge over here. And we're going to use a battle mod modifier in a second. So, this is a good shape. Like back in the day when I started, I uh, I used to uh, I used to do a very like precise work, and it took me hours to make something very simple. Like the first thing I made was actually a shield, but I was filling in all the numbers to the exact point, and uh, it took hours, and it was actually a very simple model. Like if I look back, but um, so I've learned to like that it's fine if if it's if it's Roughly this, the, the the correct shape. So let's uh, enable um, sh uh, smooth shading and uh, auto auto smooth for a second. We're doing normals. So we can actually add another look at here to make it a little more curvy. I think it's pretty great. This. If you guys have questions in the way, just ask, and I'll try to answer while uh, while working on it. So then we have the rim, and it's actually a bit downwards, as you can see. And this is probably like if you struck the shield with a spear, uh, it's not going to stuck on, on a straight face because there's the curve, so it might like slide to the side. So it's not going to uh, stick in the shield, which could be a real problem if it happens. So what we actually see? Oh no! Oh, okay. So this this second layer is the glass protection layer, so we should model that. So it's not as thick as, I, as, she, as, it, as it seems from a distance. But actually, there's a little bump in this part. Oop, oop, oop. OK, I think we're pretty good on the way. Maybe this is a little outward. Not too much, though. All right. Uh, now we're going for the inside. And the inside is not just an extrude, yeah? Yeah, you need the sides to, uh, to like, visit them. Do I visit the sides? Yeah. Um, sometimes, like, uh, I'm not, like, in the best financial position yet to, like, if it's on the other side. I haven't visited the Vatican to, to this. I, like, I find some pictures on the, uh, from some guy who went there to actually get reference photos. Uh, but if I can, I, I try to, yeah. Like for example, the castle I showed in the beginning, I've actually visited the ruins to see like, like where it's standing. Uh, uh, one thing you never get from photos is like, for example, the view from. 
Um, I mean, someone might take a vacation picture, but it's it's always different if you're there. It's like you suddenly get things. Uh, my first time in the in the Pyrenees, um, I was actually realizing that you could take an entire army just on the other side of the next mountain, and no one would notice on this side. I d I didn't even realize that. Like, it's so weird. But for that, you need to be on site. Come keyboard again. So this is actually a little bit lower than that, so we get a smoother curve to the inside. Okay, and we can see on uh, on our inner one, I think this one. Okay, so we can see that the metal actually doesn't go to the inner edge all the way. The metal goes to here, and then you have a piece of wood. So we should actually add a loop cut here. Oh, that's the outside. Um, doo -doo -doo. Loop, kits can, loop kits can be amazing, but they also can be <laughs> frustrating sometimes. So we had a little bump because that's where the, the metal stops and the, and the wood begins. And the metal itself is not actually that thick. It's the, it's the wood of the shield that, that gives it the thickness. So the reason that I'm like, I know more, I, I've studied more about the shields than you can get from the image, so it's not like I'm extracting this, all this information. Um, because I really like these shields, so. But if, if it's like uh, objects that I like have never seen before, or uh, only in a glance, uh, then we'll actually take the time to uh, to study the the object uh, or subject, and uh, yeah, make sure that I become a semi expert on the on the subject. So I uh, try to find experts that do know a lot about it, or um, or uh, dive in the archives. I really like archives, dusty books, those books that you're actually you have to touch them with gloves because it's the danger of, uh, of you destroying them. There are so many stories in these things. Okay, so I'm not really putting the time in to actually make sure that the, the thickness, uh, what I actually read about the shield is that the, the thickness on the, on the center part of the shield, of the wood, and my picture disappeared, uh, is actually thinner than on the side, so they even made some some taper in the, in the wood, which is really like difficult to do, like on a in a good way, like in a perfect way. So they were quite. Uh, is it moving there? With a reason for that? Um, uh, not that I've read about. Like I can I can speculate about those things. Um, uh, reasons might be that like because the glancing off to the side, uh, most weapons might be st get more stuck on the side. Like, I, 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 for this is just as like a speculation. I do like to think about it, but I won't say that it's the truth or something. The what? Weight reduction. Yeah, sure, that's, that's always the, the most important, but why they, would it be, make it thicker on the end? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was actually talking about the wood, not necessarily the metal, but okay. <laughs> which yeah, you're right. You're right about the metal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So maybe they did the wood this way to complement the the metal variation. I don't know to to give the whole strength. Um, so this one has a little simpler armrest. Um, Let's put a 3D cursor somewhere here. Uh, plane, plane, yeah, the plane. Yeah, 
All right. So we can actually see that it's curved on this side. So we uh, use the bevel tool. Put a curve in there. And it's actually a little bigger. You can just use symmetrize for that. Um, Let's hide the shield for a second so we can actually see what we're doing here. So let's give this a little thickness. So my nor normal workflow like uh, with materials and stuff is actually in Substance Painter. But I wanted to show you to you guys that you can do some, some of that in, uh, in Blender. Like Substance Painter is a really good tool, but Blender is an even greater tool. So don't want to think that I bet I'm betraying Blender or something. <laughs> So we have this curve here, and then we see that this thing goes actually like too very thin. And it's probably because it had some like a uh, wool inside. Ooh. Keyboard is has a bit of a delay sometimes, it's weird. So currently like I could do this better, I could use the spin tool. Uh, Blender 2.8 has a very nice, I saw a new interface for the spin tool. So I'm gonna misuse the heck out of that. Um, but for now, we're just uh, doing it with a bit of eyeballing. I've really, uh, over the years, learned to like eyeball different curves. Okay, and then, uh, remove this face. And it's actually not thin enough. So we're using the proportional editing tool. And put it on sharp. <coughs> do, 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 do. Something like this, good for now. And then we use, uh, let's see, it's not actually in the, I cannot see my x axis. Symmetrize. We need to go from plus to, let's see, minus y to, no, no. Oh, the center of the object is not there. I'll just copy it over. No. So, for example, when I'm working with the uh, I'm, I'm forgetting to talk, like, <laughs> ask questions if you think it's too silent, but... Um, uh, when I'm working, for example, uh, with the, on the Rembrandt house, I'm actually working with historians. They call themselves construction historians. Uh, and it's really great to, like, like, work together with these people that, like, work on a certain subject for, like, 20 years. I mean, they know everything about the city they live in. Uh, and I don't live in that city myself so for me it's all uh, it's all new uh, but after like the project I know a lot about the city so I can I can tell people about about things that, like some even the citizens of the the city themselves don't even know it's very interesting and I hope that I can later in life even do this in other countries I mean there's so much so much interesting things all around the world that uh, needs to be either preserved or, or reconstructed. So let's uh, g let's get back our shield. See uh, if you put. Oh, we actually drifted off a little there. So let's move it in here. Do -do -do. Oh, 
Jo, až se vzím, jak mi co mám. Uh, let's see what can I talk about. Um, oh. Yeah, so often like a lot of museums uh, around the country, like the Netherlands has a lot of museums. That's what you get when you have a long history. Um, I'm not going to fault this whole thing, but uh, a lot of museums actually use uh, uh, bigger companies that don't necessarily specialize in history. They uh, are just production companies, sometimes even game companies, or uh, they make commercials. Um, uh, and then they hire these companies because, well, they, they know what they're doing in terms of uh, uh, 3D production, uh, but they don't necessarily care about the history or, or, uh, or subject. Um, so what you often get in museums is like something that looks fun, like a little animation or a little like uh, game for uh, visitors to play with. Come on, keyboard. Um, but like, there might be errors in it and that they didn't really care about it or something. Um, and for me, like, the, the, the focus is to give the best experience, but also, like, like tell the truth. And and yeah, that's something I, I always th tell my clients. Like, I, I really take the time to to focus on um, uh, or give on giving this quality. And then, like, I'm a little guy. I'm, I don't have uh, 100 people working at my, uh, my company. Um, but it's the quality that I give. And it, it seems that people, like, tell you that. Like, not everyone. But uh, some of the museums or, or like, uh, govern government uh, heritage foundations, they uh, value the, the, the quality that it brings. Um, yeah, so that's one of my selling, point, selling points. Uh, let's see, where are we? Um, so we have made this part, and in our other uh, reference, um, it was in the, this one, we go back to the face paintings. We can see that there's this robe all around. So let's try to make this. But for that, we need to decide what the upside is of our shield. So if we're going to turn it around. That's very busy. Yeah, yeah, so like, I'm not gonna put on all imperfections here, but imperfections are really important for like the selling point. And for that, what you said, like, you have to look at the tools that they use to make it. Like these, these bronze shields are actually hammered uh, around the shape that they they, uh, they had before. Um, but also you have to think like, okay, then you see some people making hammered looks of metal, but they actually were pretty uh, sufficient in uh, making it all smooth and, and shiny. So like you really have to think like through and like people were a lot smarter than we give them credit for in the past. Uh, and we only see that if we actually uh, look deeply and try to think like what, what was their idea like uh, shields in the Greek period were one of the most important parts of a soldier like um, there's this saying like uh, come back with your shield or on it and on it means that you're dead and carried on your shield back home um, which means and that's because the shields are quite heavy so if you ran from the battlefield you had to drop your shield because otherwise you wouldn't be fast enough to actually flee from the enemy who also has shields. So that means if you don't come back, uh, if you come back without your shield, then you have, you've, you've run. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like they're saying, like, uh, I think the Spartans used it more than the other groups because they, they famously fight to the dead, which is actually not that much more than the others, but they like to think they did. But um, yeah. Uh, what do you mean with the uh, wooden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, see, the picture also has this strip in the middle. 
so it's, it's the same thing, but this one is like thin here and thick there, so it's a different way around. Uh, but it's actually for your arm. It's for your arm. So th the center of the shield is around your elbow. Yeah. So the shields that you hold with your hand, those are Viking shields. Like the, f the Vikings have shields they hold in the middle. Yeah, all these shields, they wear them over their arm. So the center of the shield's in the middle. So it's, it's hard to see that that's the middle, but it's the middle <laughs> of the shield because it, the photo is a bit uh, to the side. Uh, and you can actually see here, there are little holds for the ropes. So you hold that with your hand. So the thing is on your arm and you hold, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing like to consider that, like you see an image and you have the physical thing that they found, for example, like, a, I don't know, a cooking pot and you see on paintings, you see the cooking pot and then you see it in real life and it's like, but there are no holes for the handle and on the, on the image it has a handle. So then like, is, is it from the same place or not? Or did they just make two variations without them with handle? And like, you have to think about these questions, like uh, just deciding, oh, I see an image and I'm gonna make it, is not always the, the, the right solution. Um, so let's quickly add a curve. Oh, it's the path. Do, do, do. I keep flipping it. So, um, like if I look at this image, we see that this is the one where he holds it. And then it goes to uh, the point here and the point there. So if we start modeling this shape of the curve, I don't know how visible it is. My background is quite dark. Wait, maybe I can disable the the show backgrounds that was in the display well, backgrounds. Oh, it's still dark. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, so we have the hanging part here. I wonder if we can do it with three. Let's see how it's on five. This tree right there. Yeah. And it goes in front of there. Oh, it's cyclic by the way, so. Oh. So, and like you could simulate this with cross simulation to get the uh, accurate. Um, Uh, to get an accurate physical hanging, which you can also estimate it. So like gravity comes from here. So this one is actually hanging more like this. And this is getting to the place where the handles are. And then we have here the part that we hold with our hand. And then we have the second one, which, which would actually, I don't know how they showed on the image. Oh, on the image it does, it goes straight here, see, I was almost making it wrong. So it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, but it hangs halfway the shield. I mean, I'm sure that it, there were different ways that everyone had their different shield because they had to let, they had to buy them themselves. So it's probably not super standardized in the, in terms of decorations and uh, like these ropes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I I don't know exactly if it's if it's all si uh, uh, sigils for their house or whatever, uh, or if they just did paintings that they liked or meant something to them. Uh, and of course, there were paintings that has a spiritual meaning. And then you have pain uh, of paintings that are actually like the Spartans with it. The triangle was a thing, but it was not a metal part on it. It was actually just a painted. And it's a, it's a, the letter L from Greek. I don't know Greek people here. Um, uh, from La, Mac La Macedonia, I'm actually butchering that, but it's the area around like the, around Sparta. Um, and 
as after several city states had their own uh, uh, meaning to, uh, or symbols that they use often. So, for example, yeah, for the uh, for the Athenians, you have the owl from uh, Zeus that you see often. From the Thebes, you have the uh, a club, like a, a wooden piece from from Heracles. Uh, so, yeah, all the different shapes, and sometimes they meant something, sometimes they're personal. And there was an uh, interesting thing while well, researching these shields, what I, what I ran into, and that was um, one guy decided, like, you always see when they're talking about the Greeks, they, you always see them talking about battles and uh, the amazing strategies that they use. Uh, but you rarely see them talk about, like, what, what am I doing here? This is not supposed to go there. Um, you rarely see them talk about how the actual soldier felt on the, on the field. And, this is a completely different path. Um, so he decided, well, I'm, I'm going to make a 10 of these shields from wood and not going to bother making them pretty or put metal on the top. Uh, and I'm just going to get some guys and try to reenact like uh, the, the battlefield uh, and see what happens. And what she actually figured out is that the curvature of the shield is actually pretty important. Um, if you remember, Viking shields are, are just flat, flat sheets of wood uh, with a, a metal part in the center. But these shields have a curve, and you realize that if you're pushing two shields against each other, that because they're both curved, you cannot figure out which, which side the other one is going to push, which is this advantage for you in, this, in the way that you cannot see what the enemy is going to do. Like, is he going to push left or right? But it's also an advantage for you because he cannot do that for you. Uh, because like there's only one point of contact and not the whole shield, so the, the, like one of those things you only figure them out through practice. You don't like. I mean, there might be people who have like estimated that from most things like this. You only do them through practice, which of course you can. So it's not the most symmetrical, <laughs> but it's uh, fine for now. Hmm. Where the where the shields were circular. Uh, yeah, because it's easier to make a circular thing, like. Uh, uh, they did have oval shields, yeah. Like the earlier shields were oval, but they didn't wear this. Like the very early Greeks, like before, f like 500 years before the Greeks we know about, um, they had shields that had an eight shape and were more like in a point in the front. Um, they did use different methods, uh, but I think yeah, this was the, the maybe it was the easiest to make. I don't know, like personal preference, like cultural thing. Uh, there are several reasons. I mean, the Vikings also chose round shields. Well, they could have so made a new. Um, they also had round and oval shields. They were actually more prominent than the square ones. Like the square ones that they used in Testidos and, and other formations. I'm not too first on the Romans as I am on the Greeks, but um, the, the square shields were actually like specialized occasions. I mean, you know, I know you see them a lot in like if you Asterix and Obelix, they only have the square shields. You never see any other shields. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Greeks fought different than the, than the Romans. So even though they're both standing in line next to each other, they fought different tactics and the shields supplement that. Um, what were you doing? We were extruding this. That's a bit thick. So let's estimate that on a three millimeter rope. Something like that. It's um, not as pretty as I would like. <laughs> like Normally a shield like this would take me like four hours to make, but we're not going to sit here for hours because you guys will get tired of it. Um, what I'm going to do now is going to uh, work a bit on the materials. So let's go to the, my texturing view. I've actually modified Blender. If you like, I like the the, the serif fonts. It's a little classier than the default fonts. It might be harder to read. Uh, maybe I should have put it back for you guys, but uh, I hope it's fine. Um, so I actually have an uh, all texture. 
Oh, uh, one part that you can also see, like the wood in the shield was actually covered with hide or uh, fabric. I can't really see if this is cloth or, or leather, but it's something that survived the ages. It's really, it's really interesting and really rare that like these organic parts, like the wood and the cloth, survive. So this thing must have been lying in the, uh, the mud or like at the bottom of the sea or whatever, because that's the best place for these things to survive. Um, so I, put, I, I got a nice awl for on the, the front of the shield. Uh, it's not mine, so I hope the guy on, on the internet who made it is not going to get angry. It's just for, for show, I'm not going to sell this, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and we have uh, some dirt, some cloth, some uh, metal, some paint texture, and some wood. So we actually have to single out the different parts. Like there are lots more detail, like I didn't make any nails uh, or any like the clips with that, that hold the wires, but you can imagine them there. And, uh, all these details are important, like if you don't make them, it's not gonna be as believable. Um, and often I would do those in Substance Painter instead of in uh, actually modeling them. So let's say the front of the shield is uh, going to be painted, of course. There are different ways to do it. You can use uh, vertex paint maps. You can uh, do, uh, for now we're just going to do different materials. Um, Next, you're gonna do a second one for this. So let's say uh, painted. Um, use a principal one. Okay, so for this one, we're going to use the owl. Uh, where is it? There it is. You can actually drag and drop a texture from here to here. It's very quick. <laughs> Those little things. Another thing that I often use for reference is an image empty. And if you drag it from here to here and hold control, you see it's changed to add empty image. And you hold it like this, and there's your image. And empty images don't render. So they're for, re they're for reference. So if I render this, see, it's gone. So. Yeah, it's, 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 like, it's really great. Very quick way. Um, oh, not rendered. No. We don't have EV yet. Uh, we have the all and we need the paint. Let's watch the time on the way. So we're going to use this as a base texture. For this material, and of course we have to UV. Did I assign it? I didn't. Ah, just select it all again. Assign, there we go. And we have to UV unwrap this. Just gonna do it quickly now, it's not the perfect circle, but cares okay so we have the paint on here but I actually want to make it blue so we're going to do a little uh, color mixing and we put this on the bottom put this on uh, what is it overlay and then make this blue um, I don't, like, this is one of the things I have to research, but often you see the Athenian shields are blue, but it al might also be a, the, like, a common trope, like, in a lot of games and scenes, they like to portray Sparta as red and Athens as blue. Um, I have no idea how historically uh, based this is, but let's go for it for now. Um... And we other need, need another mix node because we're going to use that as uh, as our mask here. So for this image, we actually want a separate UV map so we can actually position it without changing the, the map for the paint texture. Um, 
So extra UV map, and we call that decal. Add a UV map here. Select it, connect it. And then we know no it rango. See, see, it's not fit because it's like all the way in the center. So we need to scale this up. But what happens is you see now there's repetition. And if we want to get rid of that, what we can do is change that from repeat to clip. And it's not going to change. I don't know if this is a bug, uh, but it's changing in the render. So cycle is actually changing it. Uh, but it doesn't change here, so I think that's a bug. But uh, it's probably going to be fixed in 2.8. Uh, our Lord and Savior. Uh, um, yeah, so we're going to use this as a mask. So we're going to take uh, the color from here, put it in here. And for the other one, we're going to make a duplicate of this. And put it in here and make this white. Put it in here and put this to mix. And it needs to be the other way around. Except now we have the all there. And if we render it now, we have a. Why is it different here? What? So I do need to flip it. Okay, weird. Um, so we're also going to do a bump map for uh, extra detail. Bump. Hello. There we go. So it's not the best way. Like, if you want to make it really realistic, you work with PBR textures. Uh, right now, I'm just going to uh, grab this texture and just take the black and white version, put it in the height. It's just going to use the little detail from here and then decrease the strength to 0.1. Just this gives this a little extra detail, put the roughness somewhere around there so it's a little bit shiny. Um, and let's do the, the back side. So this part would actually be cloth, and then the, the last part would be wood. So right now, if you do it this way, you actually get very sharp edges. So it's not the best way to do it. Uh, you can better make texture paint maps, because then you can blend between the different uh, masks. Um, but for time constraints, we're doing it this way. So I'll make a new one, use the print default. Then we're going to get our fabric texture, drag it in here. Not that one, UV unwrap. This one needs to be bigger because the fabric is actually quite wide. So to get the right size. Also for this, normally I actually study that it's actually the right size, but for now. And just for the lols, let's make this one red. Uh, here, overlay. Eh, like this color. I have 10 minutes. If there are questions, ask them. <laughs> so for uh, VR expositions, I currently use Unreal Engine. Uh, with the new VR plugin, I might switch to Blender, who knows. Um, that thing is, by the way, amazing. Uh, thank you, Jonas, was it? I don't know who made that. But uh, I will definitely be making Blender in uh, while in being in VR. I think that must be an amazing experience. So we uh, actually just copy this texture over, but for the metal. Bronze. And then we just swap out the texture. Uh, go away. <coughs> so 
So for that, we take this extending part, and this little edge. This is all copper. The sign. And we, of course, make this copper colored. And put it on metallic. It's going to look very dark in the viewport. Let's do this in the quick and dirty way. So we have some texture there. And for the last part, the wood, going to copy this over once again. Uh, let's take this one. And switch it out for the wood. Find it. There we go. And take the metal leg down. Okay, so if we go look at it in the rendered view, let's see what we got. Uh, by default, I have uh, HDRI in my startup scene, so we already have a uh, nice lighting. We didn't really do anything about it. Yeah, my laptop is also not the best in, in rendering, but um, yeah, this is Shield. So I think I'll leave it at here. <laughs> if you guys uh, want to get in contact with me, um, I'm on ArtStation mainly, um, but out here, if you want to take pictures, is my contact information. Uh, also, for questions about modeling, you can contact me. Any questions yet? Okay, thank you all for coming, and uh, see you next time.